Okay, welcome back. Let's go with the acid flow. We see that RD length is used to perform a arithmetic operation to determine the length of the label, to de determine the end of the label. In this case, this is the end of the entire host name. Um, oh, sorry, the length of the entire record that we'll be reading. We then see that the function TF DNS exp label length is invoked, passing the label label end pointer and the start. So this is past the headers now. So this is the resource record after the headers. If we look at the operation, basically this while loop attempts to determine the length of the entire host name. And how does it do this? Well, it first checks to see that it hasn't observed the, the zero label length, which would signal that it has reached the end of a host name. And then it basically reads the characters up until it finds the label end pointer. For each character, it first treats it as a label length and then proceeds to determine if indeed it's referring to a pointer or if it's a traditional label length. The first if statement confirms that we are dealing with a, a non-compression pointer, whereas the else statement, the, the else block, confirms that we're dealing with a compression pointer. Okay, so there is an arithmetic operation performed for total length using the current label length plus one. Now, we know that the label length is supposed to be a 16 bits, so it's, it's two byte integer. And so overflowing this 16 bit value by just one increment, given the limitation of the DNS spec and the number of size, the, the maximum size of a packet, the maximum size of a, of the label name and the maximum size of a host name could be pretty challenging. But is it really? We will see. And then we observe the case for the compression pointer, which as we as we talked about previously refers to pointing jumping back to an earlier point in the packet to refer to the rest of the label length eventually total length will be returned and if total if and label length would then be used to create a buffer so tf get tf get raw buffer would be created to a size of label length and then eventually we will be copying some data to that newly created buffer. Keep in mind, if for any reason we're able to manipulate the size of the buffer that gets created, then we have an opportunity to write out of bounds. Okay, so once again, there is an opportunity for under, under allocation using that integer overflow Remember, we saw in the heap buffer in in the heap buffer overflow equivalent of this of this code snippet, we observed a different technique or different vulnerability that allowed the label length to actually be less than the data that would be that would be written to the buffer. In this particular example, we'll be leveraging that integer arithmetic to see how we could come up to see how we could create a buffer that is less than the actual ideal size and write to it causing a buffer overflow. A heap buffer overflow. All right. So how can an attacker overflow total length? Now, I encourage you after this presentation to go back to the reference section and take a look at how JS off deck, which were the original um, discoverers of this vulnerability, to actually watch the YouTube video on, on this vulnerability and see how they were creative about actually exploiting it. Okay, so I, I'll do my best to explain. I might not do it as perfectly as the video, but I hope you know you can take that time and spend a little bit of a three minute section watching that video, watching the full animation in play. All right, so just a few things to recap. The DNS host name, DNS specification recognizes the end of a host name when it finds the null byte, the, the zero length, the zero label length, okay? Um, we can jump to the back if we use a compression pointer 
So you can ref refer to a label that has been pre-reading before if you use a compression pointer. And if we're not using a compression pointer, then the way that the length of the total host name is achieved is by basically finding all the label length numbers within the host name and summing them up and adding one each time to determine the length of the host name, right? Because the host name contains period. So with that recap in mind, let's observe how we can actually overflow that buffer, right? Given the limitations of the DNS spec. Okay, so assuming that we start here, assuming that we start at offset zero F in this matrix, and this is the first length that will be read, right? So this would be the, this will be zero F basically is a label length. What would happen is that the code would retrieve zero F and then advance the pointer by zero F characters, right? So that brings us now down here. And it will keep doing that, it will keep doing that, it will keep doing that. And then if we, when we reach zero E, so basically this entire matrix is crafted by the attacker. So we're, we're trying to leverage, we're trying to leverage compression pointers to see how we can write more characters than is actually allowed in the packet and allowed in this, allowed by the spec for the label length and for the host name, the entire host name. Okay, so if we skip, if we set the like a, a label length of zero F, then the pointer would be advanced forward. If we keep setting a label length of zero F, the pointer will be will be advanced forward. Eventually, if we set a label of zero E, then we are right here, right? And then now, as as discussed earlier, CO will be interpreted as a compression pointer. That means we need to interpret the two bytes. And then what does that two byte do? Well, the second byte would then tell us the offsets to the start of the packet where we need to go find the other label. If we, if we go to zero E, then we're here. So now we're at zero E again. We, we read F, we read zero F as the length. It takes us advances of zero F forward, advances of zero F forward again, advances of zero F again, until now we read zero D, which brings us once again to here. Okay. And now at this time, when we read the compression, when we read the compression pointer again, it takes us back and we keep we keep going back in this manner, going down, going down the column, going back, going, starting from the top, going down the column until we eventually hit the zero label length, right? And the zero label length signals that we have reached the end of the host name. Actually using these values, we would achieve a total length of about 1502 as per the, uh, as per the original discoverer slide. So, okay, that's, a lot more than the 63 and 225, but let's see how they were actually able to get greater than 65,000 characters. Well, instead of using zero F in the example, as, as shown, they used three F. And by doing this, they were able to achieve actually 72,000 bytes, right? And because 72,000 bytes is greater than the number that can be stored in a two byte integer, we an integer overflow occurred, and then less, even less bytes were, were returned for total length. Hence the allocation, the, the, the allocation, uh, just going forward quickly, right? So by overflowing this, they get to return a very minimal value for total length. And if they are able to return a minimal value for total for, for total length, label length is therefore small. And then by getting by allocating a raw buffer of a small smaller than intended size, copying MX host name to the ASCII pointer would lead to a heap buffer overflow. So we are unaware of what the fix was uh, because this was proprietary code and um, there was some patch analysis by the researchers, but not included in this course uh, from Black Hat and check out the YouTube. It's uh, very informative and well explained. And I, I just wanted to point out how 
creative exploit writers or vulnerabilities researchers can be when it comes to actually achieving the goal right in 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 the in the conference presentation you, or and in the slides you can see that they clearly wanted to achieve a receipt right and it's it was more about just thinking about that creative process on how to go from what they currently have as an integer overflow how to obtain that integer overflow and obtain a receipt 